aliens and the enigmatic men in black are some of the most talked about mysteries in modern times, leaving many people wondering if the authorities have been hiding something. So lock your doors and turn those lights out, they may not want you to hear this. Number 1 This story came from my dad. In 1960s Ethiopia, my dad is just a child of 9 years old. At the time he's playing with his best friend Gabriel after school. They were playing in the fenced backyard of my dad's house. My dad turns his back for a second and then turns to look back at his friend and Gabriel is gone. It's important to note that my dad and Gabriel were from the top 1% of Ethiopia's ruling elite. My dad's father was a minister of interior affairs for Ethiopia and Gabriel's father was a four-star general. The backyard that Gabriel disappeared from had 10-foot bricked walls with armed guards patrolling on the outside. A couple of hours pass. His parents, my dad's parents, and the guards are searching, but Gabriel is nowhere to be found. 48 hours pass. Now, there is a nationwide search for this important general's kid. It's on the news. Police are searching door to door, describing him and what he was wearing when he disappeared. He was wearing his private school uniform, white shirt and brown pants. Helicopters now even scour the countryside trying to find him but nothing. A month passes, and then two, and then four. Their family start losing hope that he would ever be found and fear the worst. Exactly six months to the day that he disappeared, Gabriel appears back in my dad's backyard. He was wearing the exact same white shirt that he was wearing when he disappeared. His uniform was still clean. He looked exactly the same as when he disappeared. And this is when it starts to get weird. Once they confirmed that he was okay, they started asking where he'd been. He said a couple of nice men took him on a trip. He was in a white room that glowed, and other children were there from different countries. He said he was surprised that the nice men, who looked like white guys, could speak Ethiopian, and he could understand what the children were saying even though they were not from Ethiopia. The white glowing room had no windows and the doors disappeared into the walls. There were buttons on the walls and if a kid pushed them a bed would come out of the wall. He said that he was all of a sudden in a city and that it was glowing clean and cars were flying around him. He said that there were people there and that they looked strange, like us, but different. One nice man was still with him and took him to a tall building, where he said he had to stay there for a while, but he showed him to a room that he could use for his entertainment. Gabriel said he could push a button and the room itself goes places, an open field, the beach, and that the room itself would even fly. He said after a couple of hours he was taken back to Ethiopia and appeared in the backyard. He thought he was only gone for a couple of hours and no one believed him. As Ethiopia is a super religious country, most adults around him thought that he was possessed by the devil. Gabriel was even forced to get seen to by a priest to cast the evil spirits out of him. But he turned out okay after that. He and my dad still keep in touch, as they have done throughout their lives. Gabriel got a doctorate in physics, and has worked in Holland for a long time. 
still makes for one of the creepiest stories I've ever heard. Number 2 Before I tell my story, I'd like to say that I am a complete skeptic and question everything and anything supernatural. I think extraordinary claims should always require extraordinary evidence. And even to this day, I will never be able to empirically prove what I experienced. I am currently 26 years old, and this happened on June 16, 2007. I remember it vividly. It was immediately embedded in my long-term memory when it all happened. In psychology, I believe they refer to these events as flashbulb memories. Anyway, I was living with my parents at the time. It was a pretty stormy night. The wind was gustling slightly more than usual. Rain was coming down violently, with your typical cracks of thunder and lightning. I was playing World of Warcraft at the time, enjoying the idea that I had a legitimate excuse not to go out and do anything. I was about to finish one of the longest chain quests in the game, and then boom, the internet goes out. I try for about 30 anxious minutes to get the internet to work, and you guessed it, nothing. I head to my room, frustrated. Here I am, home alone, no internet and irritated as hell. My parents at the time were at a work-related event. I remember laying on my bed just staring at the ceiling, turning my head to look at my old retro alarm clock. It read 6.18pm. When I hear knocking, I immediately sprung up. Eyes wide open, startled as hell. I crawl to my window that faces the front door. And then, the knocks again. I peek outside my window and see three tall men literally dressed in your typical FBI looking black suits. One of them had what looked like to be a folder or file or something. Another one had what I now identified to be a Geiger counter and the other one was the one beating my door with his huge fist. I head to the door and don't really think much of it. I honestly thought they were just church people soliciting their beliefs. So I open the door, and the one man nearest the door that was knocking greets me in a very monotone voice. He then pulls out a badge, and says that him and his colleagues need to check the water source from the house faucets. I asked them a bunch of questions, and it turns out that they were in fact FBI, and that someone had allegedly tried to poison the city water. I quickly called my parents to let them know what was going on, and they okayed the situation. The guys in suits didn't even check the water in my house. They had some other group of government guys show up and check. I tried to ask them if there was a motive or if it was a terrorist, whatever it might be, and they simply said that they couldn't talk about it in any detail. Out of nowhere, all the lights in the house go out. It's pitch black, and the guys in suits tell everyone to stay calm. They think it's just a power outage. The guys taking water samples turn on their flashlights as one of the flashlights flashes over to the tallest of the suited men, I see a reflection in his face, almost as if there were metal underneath it. The guy with the flashlight quickly directs the light somewhere else, and a moment later, the guy with the flashlight says, Sir, it has begun. The suited guy with the Geiger counter turns it on, and the thing starts going haywire. Not even three seconds later, it felt as if I was being pulled into a million different directions. I couldn't see a thing. I just felt excruciating pain. I thought it was the process of being disintegrated alive. And out of nowhere, I see nothing but white. I literally thought I was in what religious people would call heaven. A man appears to me and smiles. 
he swings his arm in an inviting gesture, as if I were to enter a ballroom or a dance party. I try to walk, but nothing. Then the white room gets sucked in on itself, and I see my life flash before my eyes. I see everything. Disneyland at 5, my first kiss at 15, I watch 9-11 happen on the TV with my mum and dad. Everything. I see the earth suspended in space. I'm watching earth from above and I fall. I am falling, my heart racing, numbness, disbelief, and then I see the ground getting closer and closer. I know this is it. I know I am about to die. But before I hit the ground, I hear the voice of the monotone suited man say in my head, Do not, no matter what. I woke up in my bed with a cold sweat and a panic. I freaked out so much and ran downstairs to find my parents cooking dinner. I run back upstairs and see the time is 6.22. I was relieved to find out that it was a dream. But it gets creepy. I go downstairs and ask my parents when they got home. They told me that they'd been home all the time as it was their day off. I asked how their company event went, and they said that that was last week. I go to my computer to find that my WoW account was logged in, and where I left off before the internet went down. I check my computer to see the date, and it was the 23rd. I have literally no memory of a full week. I try to recall what happened in my dream. It was a blur. I go back upstairs and see that it looked like someone had been through my closet. I search around and freak out. The exact same Geiger counter that the alleged FBI agent was holding was in my closet. I have never told anyone about this until now. I have since spent the last decade trying to put the pieces together. I just live day by day as an ordinary person, hoping that they do not return. Number 3 about five years ago, me and two other friends were on our way back from a warp tour in Maryland, being driven by one of the friend's mothers because none of us had cars that we could drive yet. It was almost night, the sun was still kind of out, and it wasn't that dark yet. We were driving on a two-lane highway that had trees on either side of the road and a median in the middle of the lanes. As we were driving, a creature ran out from the trees on the other side of the highway and jumped the median and sprinted towards the trees on the other side. We almost hit the thing and our friend's mum had to slam on the brakes and everyone in the car was screaming their heads off. Not because it was a look out for the deer situation, because it was the legitimate, most scariest thing I have ever seen in my life. It was black and had long gangly limbs as well as mopey black stringy hair. This thing moved so weirdly, I can remember it clearly to this day. It galloped so awkwardly, and when it jumped, it jumped off its back two legs and landed again on the back two legs before coming down, and continued to gallop across the road. Everyone in the car said the same thing, which was what the hell was that? To this day, I am convinced it was a demon or alien or escaped medical experiment. It was large and terrifying, and the way it moved was unlike anything I've ever seen in my life. I wish I had more details about it, but sadly that's all I remember. I've asked my friends and my friend's mum on numerous occasions about it, and it still gives everyone the creeps. Number 4 When I was around 7 years old, I was raised primarily at the time by my grandparents, 
who lived in a rural county in East Texas. I'll never forget one day when we had the most unusual man come by the house one afternoon unexpectedly. I remember there being a knock at the door as I was playing in the living room at the time and called up to announce to my grandparents that someone was at the door. My grandmother took a quick peek out the window before answering the door and I remember glimpsing a very dark coloured or black sedan. Thinking back, I find it odd that I couldn't recall hearing a car pull up, as I had been playing near the window for some time. My grandmother answered the door, and to the best of my recollection, the man revealed himself to be some sort of door-to-door -door salesman. My grandmother invited him in, and called for my grandfather. I have never in my life seen a man so pale. He was dressed in an all black suit with matching hat and tie, and initially a large pair of sunglasses, which made me wonder if he was blind. And not to mention one of the saddest excuses for a toupee that I have yet to bear witness to, and couldn't get over the stark contrast of his pale skin to the seemingly painted on lipstick. My fixation became apparent and my grandmother shooed me into the back room and asked me to leave the man so that they could speak with him. Throughout the visit, I kept trying to sneak peeks at the man and comment to my grandmother whether or not she thought he was sick because he was so thin and pale. Eventually, I suppose, he finished his pitch and eventually made his way for a quite slow exit. I recall as he was leaving, he seemed to thank both my grandparents. I couldn't make out everything that was said, but I did recall that he said something a bit more odd than his appearance. He seemed to pass his hands in front of both my grandparents' faces and said something to them both, but all that I could make out was the word forget, and soon he was on his way. My grandparents seemed to be momentarily in a dull fog after closing the door and quietly pulling off. I immediately asked them who the man was, and they both looked at each other and asked me who I was referring to. Now you can understand that all three of us were quite baffled. Them, as having no recollection of a visitor, and me, having no rational explanation as to how the hell they couldn't remember the guy that was just there. I went on at them for weeks, asking them who the salesman was trying to jog their memory and they would always say that there was no one. They even went as far as to say that I was mixing up another business acquaintance of my grandfather's who had dropped in a few months before, but I assured them that there was no way I could confuse these two people as they were so different. As recently as a year ago, I tried to bring it up again when I was visiting them both, and they both could not recall the strange man. This did happen back in the mid 80s, so if they didn't remember then, they obviously wouldn't remember now, but I thought it would be worth a try. But still, I have no explanation for what happened that day, and I know what I saw. Hey guys, it's Mort here and thank you so much for listening. This topic is one I've always been fond of, as my parents and I, especially my mum, would love watching The X-Files. Do any of you watch it? If you enjoyed the video, please leave a thumbs up so that I know you liked it. And whilst you're at it, why not hit the subscribe button for more true scary stories? But seriously, what do you guys think? Is there intelligent life out there? Are we being kept in the dark and have aliens already made contact? I'd love to know your thoughts, so please let me know in the comments section below. But for now guys, I'm going to sign off. Stay awesome. Don't forget to check out my Twitter and Instagram for updates and behind the scenes. And I'll see you in the next one.